Om Shanti. Can someone say that if you hear me, hearing me? Hello. Can all of you hear Sister Lisa? Yeah, they can. They can hear you. Can you yes. take the Shanti, sister. Okay. Yes, they can. Hi. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Has your week been? You like to share how the week went with uh, your spiritual effort, with the knowledge that you're accumulating, any points that have been uh, um, attracting you to work with, any progress. Any experiences, any stories? Nothing? No sharing? So, um, today's lesson is my favorite lesson. But before I share um, with the Merle today, um, I like to ask you a question. But that would require some participation on your side. And that is, um, first question is, what does uh, service <coughs> mean to you? What does service mean to you? Any thoughts? I'm not hearing. Can you hear me? Who is that, Maggie? Yeah. Now I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think service means giving. Service means giving. Right. Yeah, giving. Any other thoughts? Any any other person? Uh, you have to do it the right way to get a benefit. You have to do it the right way to get the benefit. Right. And uh, now that you you have described your understanding of the word service. Um, has your understanding of this uh, word service changed um, since you have started? <laughs> did, you, did you hear what I said? You know, um, have you, uh, uh, you know, has uh, your understanding changed um, since you have been studying Raja Yoga, your understanding about uh, service. And if it has changed, in what way it has changed? So the first thing is to understand what is service to you? What does it mean to you? And if it has changed um, at all throughout this study, and if it has, in what way? Any thoughts? You, you must contribute, you know, before we move forward your description would be very helpful in for moving forward in understanding this. So 
So no thoughts, right? At this point. Okay, I think I have a little bit changed. Before I think giving means sacrifice, but now I don't think so. I don't think I sacrifice, uh, lose something, sacrifice something. I think it's just giving. It's a gift to me. Also, it's a gift to me. Mm. Correct. Um, Christy, would, would you like to share your thoughts? Hi, I was recommended to take the course, but I see in the email that I missed six others, but she sent them to us, which... So uh, you haven't reviewed the classes before, right? No, no. Um, I feel That's very far right. behind, but I love the topic. Well, yes, um, maybe it will make sense to you, you know, uh, again, uh, it's your understanding of the word service, so what is it you know um service is um um being of service is um trying to improve the lives of others trying to improve the lives of others right and doing that in alignment with your highest morals just with the intent to give not necessarily receive you don't carry that expectation mm -hmm. about spreading kindness and joy and love connecting now you have taken the foundation course right the the raja yoga course i took the raja meditation course right and, uh, and this was recommended the introduction and also the uh, uh, advanced class right um perhaps this might be more advanced I'm not oh, quite yes, sure yes. if I've taken that other course. Actually, uh, you were supposed to take the um, introduction and intermediate. And yes, this is the advanced class. Oh, I'm really, I'm a, I pardon my apologies for, for um, tuning in. Maybe sh I should wait then um, and view the other lessons on YouTube, perhaps. Yeah, view them, get yourself um, much more comfortable. You're welcome to stay, you know, and just... Um, hear uh, what the lesson is saying and uh, um, then later on you can also review the the recording sure thank you i'll sure. see yeah thank and, you very much sure I appreciate it and galaxy i see a name called galaxy here yes uh, my name is amit amit mom danny amit yeah so it's A-M-I-D. Right? Yeah, yeah. Wow, great. So what is your understanding of service? It means uh, connecting with God and uh, my soul. Connecting with God and myself. Wonderful. These are all wonderful answers. And um, I don't know. Um, uh, Yogita, did you share? I'm sorry, I, I just joined. I don't know what the question was. Sorry. No, no problem. We were asking, you know, what does service uh, mean to you? And um, since you have started uh, the study of Raja Yoga, has this understanding changed for you? And if it has, in what way it has changed? Um, yes, a lot. I, I honestly didn't think service could involve thoughts, and that is my most uh, um, valuable understanding after doing Raj Yoga, how to get love from Baba and give it to others, because unless you take it from Baba, you cannot give it to others. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's, that's a very good thing I've learned from Raj Yoga. Great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, everyone. So now that we have um, heard a few um, descriptions of you know, your understanding of the word service, we would like to listen because today's um, lesson is on uh, 
the title is World, World Benefactor and the Power of Silence. So uh, both of them are needed, you know, um, because Baba's definition of um, being a world server uh, um, as he is himself a world server and a world benefactor, been bringing benefit to the world, is that, you know, <clears throat> he's saying that how uh, the basis of this kind of service is uh, holding um, very, very elevated benevolent um, feelings and good wishes for, um, uh, for, the, for the self and for others. The, the understanding of service, especially um, the understanding of the um, world service, you know, um, it's very deep. And Baba just describes it in this um, Monday today. So we start with the first part. Um, Bab Dada is constantly pleased to see all his children as world benefactors. So he is seeing us as world benefactors, you know, um, and he's giving us this world benefactor title. The father, as the world benefactor, constantly has the one thought of benefiting everyone in the world immediately. All of his thoughts are especially based on this. Just can you imagine how there is God who has all his children and his one and only uh, thought and concern is to bring benefit to the world and uh, be a world benefactor and to serve the world and to do it for everyone. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't uh, uh, act selective. You know, he wants to bring benefit to all. All of his thoughts are especially based on this. This is the seed of his thoughts. Now, as you're listening, try to listen to it from uh, uh, soul consciousness. Uh, from that, you know, use your spiritual insight, your spiritual sight, your third eye. Listen from that perspective, listen from that angle, um, and uh, see yourself equal to the Father. Equal in the sense that He is a point of light and I am a point of light. And this supreme point of light is now speaking to me and is giving me these um, tips and these explanations. And let me understand what he is saying from his perspective. So that's why you need to use uh, spiritual insight. You know, so um, make sure that your third eye at this point is active. Don't listen to it from, for example, um, uh, Christie's perspective or from uh, Maggie's perspective. No, not from the character but from the soul, the soul. This is Lisa, the body. The body's name is Lisa, but the soul is equal to the Supreme Soul. Both are point of light. Both are uh, um, eternal beings of light. And he's now the Supreme being of light is speaking to the children, the all the um, children of light. So, that understanding will be completely different. That's why Baba says that um, this is the seed, the seed of his thoughts. All the rest of, are the various details of the tree. So anything else that happens in the, in the world are the various details of the tree. So the seed, is, it contains the entire knowledge. And yet, everything else is just the expansion. Baba's thoughts, words, and eyes are constantly filled with benevolent feelings 
and good wishes for you children. So this is his definition of being a, um, of a world server. So, and as you're listening, take notes, you know, because later on when, we are, when I'm gonna ask you some questions, you know, like, um, what was your favorite point? What point touched you particularly? So if you take notes, then you can, you can re, um, you know, uh, uh, re recite that line to us. Unless you repeat what you hear, it's not going to sink in always, you know, it's, that's why it's good to have that interaction and it's good for you to share your thoughts and to share what you heard, you know, your favorite points. So that's why Baba is saying that um, Baba's thoughts, words, and eyes are constantly filled with benevolent feelings and good wishes for you children, no matter what you are doing, whether you are running your limited household or acting as an instrument for running a center, you should constantly have benevolent feelings for what? Benevolent feelings for what? Baba is saying that no matter whether you are uh, at home in a household, running a limited household, or you are um, at the center, you know, running a center, you should always have benevolent feelings for what? Thoughts? Benevolent feelings for what? For everyone and everything. Yeah. And that's, in one word, is for the world. Do you see what, what God is asking of each child? How we need to um, broaden our vision that is not just for our immediate family or for our myself, you know, or for my city or my country, you know, it's not. It's for the world. That's why Baba says you should constantly have benevolent feelings for the world. Constantly keep this awareness of benefiting all souls of the world emerged in front of you. No matter how far away souls may be, they should constantly appear in your awareness in your awareness to be close to you or to be in front of you. Because at present you are world benefactors <clears throat> and because you are world benefactors, in your head you are aware that all souls of the world are close to you. Even though someone may be in America or somewhere else far away, whilst you sit here, you are able to give that soul rays of peace and power within a second on the basis of your elevated feelings and good wishes. In the same way, you, and now Baba is giving us another title, you master sons of knowledge can enlighten everyone in the world and you benefit them. Even though you may be far away, time and sound have become very close because of the facilities provided by science. So now Baba is going into a little bit of expansion, explaining to us how the power of science is helping us to come closer. Look at what we're doing right now. We're using this technology to stay in connection with each other and to um, uh, connect on a, on a much, much more elevated level. 
and um, uh, we are in touch with each other and we are learning from each other through using this technology. We feel good um, using uh, the, the power of science at this point. And we connect with people all over the world, um, bring them close you know, through our phone, um, through our laptop, um, we watch movies, you know, and we see the story coming right into our living room. Um, we don't even need to go to theaters anymore, movie theaters. We just do everything at home. And that's what Baba is saying that um, through airplanes, time has come very close so that you're able to reach far distant places in a very short time because of telephones and now we have more than telephones you know we have the smartphones and we have the whatsapps and the fiber and this and that the voice of others is very close to you similarly the tv enables you to experience any scene of person to be in front of you even though they may be far away However, you are master creators. And although, that's another title that Baba is giving us, you are master creators. This is very important for you to recognize the titles that Baba is giving us. That's the way that he is seeing us, you know, being the, you are the world benefactors. You are the master sons of knowledge. You are master um, creators. Because um, if you think about it, the uh, entire experience of self-respect increases and self-confidence and self-esteem, all of this uh, come to the um, forefront. You feel it because uh, the one that is eternally available for us, the Supreme Being is telling me I am the Master Creator. It's like... Um, at this point is my choice to believe what he's saying or not. But we know that he doesn't lie to us and he doesn't just compliment. So um, Baba is saying that, however, you are master creators and although science is your creation, when you use your, now he's switching from the power of science when you use your power of silence, you can hear the sound of any soul, no matter how far away that soul may be in the world. Which sound is it that you hear? The instruments of science enable you to hear the sound of their voice but they cannot enable the sound of their mind to reach you. So since we cannot use the power of science to hear people's minds, Baba is telling us now we need to use the power of silence. And you know, when you have silence, when you sit and you get into silence, you really can hear things and you can see things that are happening around you and in the world and sometimes it hurts it hurts that other souls are crying out crying out for help crying out for some some degree of hope and here i am i can choose to sleep or um, read a novel or uh, watch tv for many hours, or I can choose to sit in silence, connect with that supreme energy, supreme being, and spread out into the world. This um, rays of peace and rays of power for the souls to catch, so they can have a, even a little bit, like a drop of hope and a drop of peace um, to carry on with their lives. So Baba is saying that um, 
The instruments of science enable you to hear the sound of their voice, but they cannot enable the sound of their mind to reach you. Through your power of silence, you should be able to hear the sound of the mind of any soul as clearly as if that soul was physically with you and speaking to you. You should be able to see that soul's peacelessness of mind and a state of sorrow as clearly as you would see a scene or a person on TV. Just as you're able to see and hear everything as soon as you plug it in and switch it on, in the same way, as soon as you connect yourself to the Father and switch on, your elevated feelings and good wishes, you should be able to experience souls who are very far away to be close to you. This is what it means to be a world benefactor. What special method should you adopt to create such a stage? What special method should you adopt to create such a stage, right? Any ideas you have? What special method should you adopt to create such a stage of being a world benefactor, such a stage that you can hear uh, the sounds of the, the um, peacelessness of the souls far away being as if they are close to you? So what special method should you adopt? Practice meditation. Practice meditation. And yes, very much necessary to practice meditation. I was, uh, I, I heard this quote recently, you know, by one of our seniors that said that um, actually meditation is not an option. It's a priority. Very beautiful, you know, it's like, um, it's, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, like an option for us to do it whenever we have time, whatever this, that, but it's a priority. One, for me to stay stable, for me to stay happy and to, to stay peaceful and not to get affected by the vibrations of the environment and by the vibrations of the world. That's the first thing. But the second thing is to be able to reach out with my mind and to serve others. Um, because there is so much we can do through words, right? There's so much we can uh, help and serve, but through thoughts, we can reach all the way to the other side of the world. So, yes, it is practicing meditation, but with Baba's, with Baba's answer is a little bit more specific, and he's saying that the basis of all of this is silence. So practicing meditation is practicing silence, getting into that place of silence. At the present time, you have to accumulate the power of silence. Because if you don't accumulate and when situations hit us, you don't have that power to see the situation for what it is and you can get sucked into it and get totally absorbed and uh, consumed by it like a quicksand, pulls you down. The sound of the mind comes in the form of thoughts. Hmm. How interesting, right? The thoughts, Baba calls them sound of the mind. Finish the sound of the mind. That is, finish all wasteful thoughts and stabilize your mind in one, one powerful thought. And this is what we're doing now. We're studying this language of God. We're studying the Merli. We're trying to understand the Merli and understand what Baba is talking to us about. We're trying to um, grasp this elevated language 
in order for us to be able to stabilize the mind, in order to, for us to be able to finish the way thoughts. And listening to what he's saying, when he's calling me master creator, then as a master creator, then my mind focuses on that one thought. Then I'm not thinking about why did this person not call me today? Why did that person uh, look at me in this way or that way? Um, uh, why, 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 what, what, what? You know, all these things that we do in our, in our chatter of the mind, we don't do that anymore. Um, or he's inviting us not to do it. And that's why he's saying that in the... Um, The ba so uh, at, the, at the present time, you have to accumulate the power of silence. The sound of the mind comes in the form of thoughts. Finish the sound of the mind. That is, finish all wasteful thoughts and stabilize your mind in one powerful thought. When you condense the expansion of thoughts into their essence, your power of silence will automatically increase. And that is, again, back to focusing, to turning your thoughts into one thought, master, creator, world, benefactor. What does that mean? Let me think about this. Think about things that, uh, uh, thoughts that are going to bring you power and take you deeper into experience of silence. And when he's saying that when you condense the expansion of thoughts into their essence, it's similar to, you know, when you look at the whole tree, when you condense that whole tree into one seed, then um, your power of silence will automatically increase. That is, the, that is how we need to use this method. You know, this is the method for us to adopt in order to create that powerful stage of the world benefactor. Now, extroversion, Baba is defining it. Extroversion is wasteful. It's like even when we are very, very sociable people and we chat all the time and we talk to this person, talk to that person, we cannot even sit, maybe sometimes we cannot even sit quietly because we feel like we need to talk. That's extroversion. is wasteful and introversion is powerful. In the same way, by merging any wasteful sound of the lips, the essence will emerge and you will be able to accumulate the power of silence. Again, by merging any wasteful sound of the lips, the essence will emerge and you will be able to accumulate the power of silence. You will then see the wonderful evidence of the power of silence. Souls who live very far away will come and tell you, you have shown me the right path. You pointed out my destination to me. You called me and I have come to you. Your divine form will be very clearly visible on the TV of their forehead. They will see you. They will experience it so clearly that they will feel as though they really had a personal meeting with you. The power of silence will reveal such spiritual wonders. In the beginning, Souls sitting far away had a vision of Ram Baba's form and were signaled to go to a particular place. At the end too, you world benefactor souls will similarly play a unique part. 
However, in order to do this, you souls have to become completely free from all bondage. You have to become so free that you are able to perform whatever task is needed with whichever power at whatever time and wherever it may be. Only souls who are so completely free from bondage can enable other souls to become liberated in life. Do you now understand how high the destination you have to reach is? And how elevated the form of your unlimited service is? When you have this realization, you will be liberated from all types of labor. You will just have to make this one effort. Do you have the courage to do this? Very powerful points that Baba is asking us, um, bringing to our attention, making us think, like, why do I need to have courage to do this? Right? Do you have the courage to do this? Do I have the courage to do what? So these are the things that, you know, you just have to listen and um, ask yourself these questions and start thinking. Because when you start asking these questions from yourself, then your mind, you know, the chatter will stop because you will be busy trying to find the right answers and trying to have elevated conversations between you and yourself, and then later on between you and the Supreme Soul. You're gonna have conversations. And then after a while, like for example, at this point, you know, there have been times that I uh, ended up always um, having uh, um, conversations with God, but now I just sit right next to him, draw, uh, the power from him, because, you know, receive his current, and then uh, through my thoughts, I just transmit his thoughts to the world. Don't have any questions. You know what? What one thing happened to me many times. Um, three times it happened to me at the beginning when I came into this knowledge. Um, I had issues at home. We got into conflict, disputes, etc. I come to the center and I talk to the center coordinator and I say, can I talk to you? Can I share with you some thoughts? I have some feelings. I, you know, I need some uh, clarification. I need some answers. And she would tell me, first go to Baba's room, sit and meditate first there, talk to him and then come to me. I said, fine, okay. So I went to the meditation room, we call it Baba's room. I sat in front of the picture and I, I said, you know, I wanted to say something, you know, to start spilling out my uh, thoughts. And the first thing that I saw, um, like in a form of this uh, point of light and in a form of this body of light came to me, said, said to me, let's first go on a tour. And I just, with him, sat on this, like a carpet of light, like a, you know, like an Aladdin carpet. Um, we, we flew around the world. And, I, and then he showed me scenes through this uh, traveling. And I saw a lot of places where there were so many um, heartbreaking um, scenes of... Um, famine and uh, war and uh, death and prison, imprisonment, etc., etc. Then we flew back into the room. Then I saw him standing there and looking at me. And at that point, I felt like my problem was so little and so minute next to what I just saw. I said, nothing, no, never mind. You know, and I did not 
discuss it. And I came out and then the teacher said to me, okay, what would you like to share? And I said, never mind, you know, I got my answer. It happened second time and the third time. See, I had to get it three times and for me to get what it means, you know, um, to be engaged into what matters and to disconnect from what really is trivial. We often get caught up into so many little issues in life that um, we forget the, the bigger picture, the overall perspective. Um, that's why meditation and the power of silence helps us become um, to, to develop this broad intellect, to develop this unlimited intellect so I can see the whole picture and, and see how the entire humanity at this point needs um, my contribution in a positive and elevated way. Not to add more, sort of like to add more fuel to the fire. So that's why Baba is saying that, do you have the courage to do this? Simply remember that you are great souls. Number one souls are seen as victorious souls who have defeated Maya. It is like this, is it not? You don't have any questions, do you? So since Baba said you don't have any questions, do you? Maybe this is a good place to pause and ask if you have any questions. If you have any thoughts, any comments. None? I've got a question. Is it uh, easier to connect when you're in a group of people? And uh, the silence, I, I, I guess, I don't know. Uh, or is it better just to be by yourself? I know you say that uh, the four o'clock in the morning is um, an optimal time to, for that. But, but then again, you say that uh, the, when you're in a silence that uh, the soul anywhere in the world you can connect with too. So then maybe you would be in a group that way too. I, right. Very good question, actually. Um, of course, the group energy and the group vibration is very powerful and uh, it's very helpful. My experience was that at the beginning when I started this journey um, in the Brahma Kumaris studies, um, every time I went to the center, I had very good connection. Every time I went to a retreat, I had very, very good connection. I had powerful connections uh, at 4 a.m. Powerful um, meditation at 7 p.m., et cetera, et cetera. And then, at the beginning, I was traveling. So I traveled to London, I went to Oxford, I went to, I don't know, um, New York here. There are different, different uh, Brahma Kumaris uh, locations. And then one time we had to fly to Trinidad and we went there and we stayed at the center for a couple of weeks. And on the third night, um, I mean morning, 4 a.m., uh, I noticed that um, how powerful my experience is, my meditation is. And, um, and I noticed that it always happens when I'm in a center and it always happens when uh, um, I am in a group gathering. In that moment, I had this vision that, you know, I'm using this vibration um, like, you know, uh, like a crutch uh, and in that moment, I had this uh, realization that I have to make my home a center. I have to uh, purify the home's vibrations from all the waste, 
I'm all the negativities. So this way I would be able to uh, sit and have a meditation and have equally powerful experience. But one reason why the centers are always very powerful is because every day, day in and day out, there, are, uh, uh, there is a schedule of meditation that they have which, you know, if you think about like a, um, like a um, piggy bank, every time somebody comes and sits in the meditation room and meditates, they're like dropping uh, um, a dollar into that piggy bank. So every time they are meditating, they're dropping the vibration of peace into that room. So what I need to do, what, that was my realization that I need to create that in my space. Um, and I need to purify the vibrations. Started cleaning up the, all the drawers, closets, this, that's created a room, a corner in the house. And uh, every time you go and sit in that room or in that, uh, like, let's say if you're only in one room and you don't have um, the luxury of having a room for meditation. But like I went to a friend's house she didn't have any space. So what she did, she created a little uh, partition in front of her bed and she got up from the bed. She went around the partition and she sat there to meditate. And every time you walked into that space, you felt that there was a live vibration so because every morning, every day, every evening, she deposited um, energy of um, peace and power into that spot. And um, I went there and any of us who went to visit, she would always say, go, go and sit and meditate in that, in that spot because she wants to build up the vibrations. And that's why um, when you have all of you, you know, you, you have your spot, think about your spot. And every time you need to meditate, go to that spot and also create a time schedule for yourself. Um, create, for example, if you cannot do 4 a.m., do 5 a.m. Don't be so uh, rigid about 4 a.m. But the mo most important thing is you need to be um, consistent and regular in depositing that energy of, um, that pure energy of uh, peace and uh, godly energy into that spot. So that's why it's very important for you to um, uh, understand that, you know, how much you can contribute to making that power of silence very powerful. Does that make sense? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I have a question. Okay, uh, just now you mentioned about the third eye and hearing the sound of other souls. I've never had those kind of experience. So would you share more of your own experience of the third eye or talking to or listening to another soul song? Right. Um, well, I was myself was, I've been very much um, tuned into uh, the vibrations of the world and it always made me very sad or uh, um, even made me very depressed. Um, I had actually a couple of uh, dear friends who have committed suicide they could, because they could not endure the pain that they were feeling of what's happening in the world. Um, when you are quiet and uh, if you tune in, you can hear, you know, but the most important thing is you can hear the, the, uh, the cries of people. You can feel the sadness, the sorrow. But right now what Baba is uh, asking us to do is to, to tune in to his vibration because I don't want to go down. I want to be uplifted. And when I get uplifted, I want to be able to uplift others. How do I do that? By clearing my mind, by um, uh, purifying 
uh, the, the chatter in the mind. Always think about it that it is uh, um, like a hotel and there are lots of customers in that hotel. There's your mother, there's your father, there's your boss, there is your colleague, there is your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, best friend, uh, bad friend, good friend. There are so many have, have um, occupied in, in, in the hotel of your mind. And what we need to do is we need to start to vacate and invite God into its space. Vacate, clear, clean, you know, even if you can visualize that you're painting the whole hotel once uh, all over again, and now you have this pristine hotel and you invite God into it. And uh, because, you know, it happens so many times when there is a celebrity that wants to come to a hotel, they always vacate the entire hotel and they just give it to that celebrity and all his um, or her um, entourage. Um, now we have this V, 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 I, P that it's called the Supreme Soul that we would like to invite him into our mind, in the, the hotel of our mind. And I need to clear that space so I can enjoy that presence. And while I'm enjoying that presence through receiving his, you know, by the, by the, um, the fact that we are, I am in the company of that powerful um, being, then I get colored with that power. And as a result, as I get colored, um, then I can spread that to the rest of the world for them to feel it and to, for them to take from it. Now here, I like to add, uh, add one more um, learning that I had about serving the world because that was my favorite um, activity and my favorite desire and my favorite topic in this lesson, in this organization and in my, in this birth. But I was uh, sitting, you know, in meditation with God and taking the, his current and spreading to the world. And I remember one, one day I was telling him, how do I know who is being touched by my uh, vibrations of peace? How do I know who is getting what? And um, didn't get an answer that day. The next day, there was Daddy Janky who gave a class and she addressed this aspect on this topic of world service. And she, she gave a beautiful example. She said that when BBC in London they broadcast uh, all kinds of uh, uh, delicate news to all the um, war um, affected countries. Uh, they don't uh, wonder who is going to tune into that um, station to listen to their news. Like uh, saying, for example, there is gonna be bombing in this uh, region, so you might, keep yourself in a shelter or move away, this, that. They, all they do is just share the information and uh, they don't care who is listening to it. They, their responsibility and their duty is to spread the news, um, to broadcast the news. And she said that you have to become a broadcaster. And it's not your business to know who has been touched. It's like, do you see how it's like, she heard exactly what I was thinking. She said, it's not your business to uh, uh, know who has received um, and who has been touched. Your job is to broadcast. And the ones who need it will receive it. And then, um, what she narrated was that there are people who are uh, sick and they are praying to God, they are pleading to God, there are people who are in prison, there, there are people who are sitting in silence and asking for a signal, and there are people who are uh, um, hopeless completely, and then they receive a light of some, some sort. So the point is that my job is to keep sending this, and that's what I do every day. Every day, you know, there are times that our very distant family members contact me and they tell me, you know what, I saw you this morning, uh, last night in my dream. You came into my dream 
and uh, uh, you you save them from this or that, you know. So the thing is that we don't know who we touch. We don't know how we touch, but we know that we have a source to receive from and to broadcast. And that is my job to become that BBC. Baba broadcast. <laughs> what is the C for? Campaign. Baba broadcast campaign. So that's my job to be. A wonderful job. Right. And it's a wonderful job. And the main thing is for us to recognize that, you know, it's not my business to know how far it goes. My business is to just send it. And from that day, it liberated me. And I just did it not, not knowing how effective it is, but knowing that no matter what, it makes me feel good. Because, you know, karmic account, the way it works, whatever you send out, it comes back to you. So you send out pure feelings and good wishes and powerful um, um, vibrations of peace and, and um, hope, you get that back. It comes back to you and then you feel light and you feel happy. And then we can give more and serve more. So, now uh, we have a few more minutes. Let me just share one more excerpt. Question is, what do you think would be a practical method to defeat Maya and become free from all bondages? Which according to this Merle is the basis for being a world benefactor to become uh, free from all bondages. Just as you remain busy in serving physically and through words, similarly set a full timetable for your mind. When your mind remains busy, you can easily defeat Maya. Busy in, in elevated thoughts, not just busy in all kinds of mundane activities. When Maya sees that your mind is unoccupied, she enters you. When your mind remains busy, you can easily send Maya away. Just think about that hotel. When, when your VVVIP supreme being is there, Maya will go away. You know, all the security um, belt around the hotel is going to push away any kind of uh, weakness. So when you don't know how to keep yourself busy or to set a timetable for your mind, Maya enters and then you find everything to be difficult. Those who love studying are able to keep themselves and others busy. If your love for this study is only superficial, then you would sometimes be busy and sometimes unoccupied, and so would be unable to keep others busy either. Therefore, keep yourself busy and destroy all obstacles and also make others do the same. Acha, meaning okay. Are all of you progressing through your efforts according to your love? Are all of you in the stage of ascent? Everyone follows the teacher. Of course, you are following the father, but you should still see the teacher, capital T, who is an instrument for you. You should see the father in the one who has become an instrument for you. See, he's not only our father, but he's also our teacher. And he's also the guru, the satguru, the guru of the truth, you know, the true guru. And he is an instrument. If the mirror in which you look is dirty, would you be able to see the father clearly? And that dirty mirror means, you know, um, your very, very um, 
foggy and polluted mind. We need to clear that. We need to clear the fog. We need to clear the dust. We need to clear the smoke. So then we can see um, God for what he is. And we can, we can connect, make that connection between me and God. And that's why Baba says, if the mirror in which you look is dirty, would you be able to see the Father clearly? The mirror should be so clean and powerful that anyone who comes in front of it would have a powerful experience of the Father. Do you move along whilst constantly remembering your inheritance? What is your inheritance? As we have heard before in the past. What is Baba's inheritance that he has given us? Yeah. To be the rulers of the world. To be the rulers of the world, right? And that's one of the inheritance that he has given us. But to be the rulers of the world, we need power and we need virtues. And he has all the powers, he has all the virtues, and he has inherited all of that to us. All the qualities that he has, all the peace, purity, bliss that he has, he has, he says it's all yours. Like, uh, claim it. Accept this inheritance. So what we're saying that, um, do you move along whilst constantly remembering your inheritance, your study, and your home together with your three relationships? the three relationships of being the father, the teacher, and the Satguru or Guru. You received your inheritance from the father. You received your education from the teacher and you were shown by the Satguru, you know, the true Guru, the way home and told that you now have to go home with him. So guru usually is the guide, is the spiritual guide. And the Satguru is guiding us back home. We need to uh, have this relationship with the Satguru. We need to have this relationship with the teacher and with the father. Because um, we have received all this inheritance from our father. But we have also received our education from the teacher. And you were shown by the Satguru the way home and told that you now have to go home with him. So do you constantly remember all three relationships and the attainments that you receive from them? Do you consider yourselves to be such elevated souls that the Supreme Soul himself has become your father, teacher, and Satguru? Again, all this, you know, you received this uh, in, in email, but it's very good for you to read it and underline, you know, these are the questions he's asking you in order to raise your awareness, in order to raise your uh, conscious, uh, consciousness um, into a very elevated level. That's why he's saying, you know, this asking this question, do you consider yourself to be such an elevated soul that the Supreme Soul himself has become your father, teacher, and Satguru? Who could have a fortune greater than this? You would never even have thought of having such a fortune that you would find God in all relationships. Your fortune is so great that even something impossible has become possible in a practical form. Something impossible has become possible in a practical form. He is not just your father, but he has also become your teacher and your Satguru. 
Devotees say that when God is pleased with you, he rewards you with everything by tearing through the roof and giving you everything. So here too, he comes from beyond the elements of the sky in order to reward you. They simply speak of God rewarding you by opening up the roof. Whereas here, the one who lives beyond the five elements, which is this, this world, and even beyond the sky comes in order to reward you. So look how fortunate you are. You should constantly remember your great fortune, which has now become your practical life. If it were just knowledge, it is possible that you would forget it, but you would never forget something of your practical life. You always remember those things. Just as you automatically remember the things of your past life, even though you want to forget them. So how could you forget this? You just have to remember one word. Continue to say Baba, Baba, and you will constantly remain an embodiment of remembrance. Even a two-year-old child continues to say Baba, Baba. You are the children of the knowledgeful one. And so, can you not remember just the one word Baba? It is an easy path, is it not? You don't find it difficult, do you? What do you, Shakti Army, feel? Shakti Army, that's another uh, word that Baba is using. Again, he's giving us this um, title of Shakti Army because Shakti means power. And Shakti refers in, in, you know, to females as well as all of us, Baba's children. And um, usually, you know, Baba refers to souls in female bodies when uh, talking about Shakti army. Because um, back when, when this whole thing started, you know, um, at that time, you know, considering the time where there were more uh, um, sisters that came into the gathering. So he was talking about the Shakti army. But, uh, you know, in, in the path of devotion or in the path of bhakti, um, Shakti is referring, referred to um, Shiva's partner. Um, Baba always says we are Baba's um, Shakti army, meaning we are um, Baba's companions. And that's where he's talking about. Um, so can you not remember just the one word Baba? You don't find it difficult, do you? What do you, Shakti Army, feel? Are we his companions? What do we feel? Do you constantly remain with the one father and no third person? You don't remember any third person, do you? It's good checking, you know, for us to check you know, as I'm listening to this, what I'm thinking about. Who am I thinking about? Is there a third person here? Or why am I even listening to this knowledge? If my mind is going into so many other places, do I really want to have this relationship with the, the one? Do I really want to be that part of that uh, Shakti army? Do I want to be his companion? Do I want to be his partner? So constantly maintain the intoxication of Baba and I. Are you the Shakti army that is free from attachment or do you still have attachment to your limited home and children? 
No matter what happens, you have to free yourself from attachment. Be a detached observer and continue to watch the scenes of the drama. So I will read the slogan. Just as light is merged in your eyes, so the remembrance of Father Shiva should be merged in your intellect. That's the slogan of tonight. Just as light is merged in your eyes, so the remembrance of Father Shiva should be merged in your intellect. Om Shanti. So we will receive a copy of this, um, Marley, and uh, we can review it. <clears throat> work with your in you know with your mind and with the intellect make sure that you know um you keep baba in your intellect um have a conversation with him you know unless you make an effort to connect with him nothing will happen this, this is not magic and he cannot do uh, any um special treats for for us because I need to make an effort to be present in front of him. And then the experiences are limitless and abundant. So maybe you make this effort this week and then next week at the beginning, we can, um, you can share your experience. I'd like to hear that. I like to hear, you know, because when you hear experiences, experiences are real. They did happen. And it stays with you for a long time. I, every experience that I'm sharing with you is as if it happened to me today. It's so fresh. It's so real because you're working and you're getting an experience, making an experience with the eternal being. So that experience is eternal too. Any questions? Any thoughts? Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Uh, can you give an example, uh, like in the Morali Baba says, to give your mind a timetable? Can you tell us something that you did to give your mind a timetable, a practical example? Well, you know, um, at the Brahma Kumaras and the Raja Yoga Meditation Centers, we have a beautiful timetable. Uh, we have our 4 o'clock to 4.04 to 4.45 a.m. meditation. And then we have in the morning, um, before we start the Merli class, uh, we have from uh, 6 to 6.30 meditation. Um, currently the times have changed for this, you know, uh, because of Zoom and connecting and having so many different back-to-back -back schedules. But then uh, we have our uh, every hour, um, there is, there is a, you can even download um, an app, you know, that every hour it can come back and say, ding. So you, you take one minute of remembrance, one minute of stopping to think about anything else but you know your relationship with the father or the teacher or the satguru depending you can you can have any relationship you want with the with, with the supreme soul then we have the meditation in the uh, evening from 7 to 7 30 uh, well now uh, it has changed from 6 30 to 7 30 you know we have the meditation and it's available on zoom um, in the evening, uh, after, for example, um, your activities in the evening, before you go to bed, you sit with Baba and you review what, whatever happened throughout the day. Anything that happened or didn't happen, anything that you said or didn't say, anything that happened to you, you tell Baba. Because what you want to do is you want to sleep um, carefree. You don't want to carry any burdens. Let's say, you know, you got mad at your um, partner or your friend and you yell at them. 
and you said something uh, hurtful. Say that to Baba. Yeah, and today this, but this thing happened. And while you are saying things to Baba, then what happens is that you realize um, that you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have said this. Um, and um, you realize how um, trivial this whole thing was. And because of that triviality, you, you cause a hurt feeling. And as a result, because of what, but being partner, you know, and in, in the presence of God, then you start feeling that uh, lightness because you have said it. Now, um, it doesn't have that importance. It is not staying here all the time. So keeping all the burden in your heart. And then you can sleep comfortably. And then you wake up in the morning, you say, good morning, Baba. And you start your day by saying good morning, Baba, meaning you're thinking about him. You're not thinking about, oh, getting up and uh, making breakfast for the, you know, the residents of the house. You are uh, now saying good morning to the one who is sustaining us. And the way I, I will be able to sustain my family is first me sustaining myself through my partnership with God. So then I, I you know, there were, there were different, um, different times, different schedules I had. For example, we wanted to serve a particular region and I connected with a couple of um, BK friends. And we every day from 12 to 1, noon, 12 noon time to 1, we meditated. I was in my place and they were in their place. And together we, um, we created this like a triangle. We connected with God's energy and we spread it to that region with, which was affected by um, some, I don't know, hurricane or some war or whatever um, <clears throat> because of knowing people in that area we ended up doing service and we did that for a whole month there are other times that you, you know you feel like you, are, you need, you have certain heaviness in you and you want to um, clear it so you, you allocate a certain time for example um, maybe uh, 4 to 5 p.m. There are times that you need to choose that it doesn't have any interference by others. So um, you choose your own timetable, but make sure you stick with it because it's sort of like uh, you come into, like for example, you come into this Zoom call, the teacher is there, but you are not showing up, right? The same thing uh, that, you know, the Supreme teacher is going to be there or the Supreme friend, friend is going to be there and I'm not showing up. So. It's very important for me to show up if I have created this timetable to be with him and he's going to be with me and he's going to empower me. And then you use a different points of the Merli to uh, uh, think about it during your meditation if your mind keeps going in different directions. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, now it's 9.04. Shall we take a minute of silence together? And I'll see you next week. With some stories. So maybe what we do is we just create a minute of um, attention. And use the, in order to have the attention let me use my spiritual sight. And with this spiritual sight, I'm able to see this entire physical world as just one huge unlimited drama. But my connection is with the Supreme, the one who is beyond this world. And my attention is on the self and the relationship with the Supreme.
with this thought and with this attention, we continue the rest of the evening in a very light way. and ending it by sleeping on Baba's lap. Om Shanti. Good night. <laughs>